everybody. Welcome to Cooking with Gina. Today I'm making some cabbage soup. So make sure you stay tuned. So I've got my ingredients washed and laid out. I'll show them to you. I've got um, some cabbage that I'm finally committed to being finished today. <laughs> I've got some potatoes and I've got a lot more potatoes on hand. Um, but for what it's worth, I have a problem. I don't know about you, but when I make soup, I tend to put too much into it. So I just want to keep my soup nice and thin. And I only like to use um, two, three, four ingredients at the most. So I'm going to be chopping these potatoes up pretty small. I've also got some corn to add to the mixture. And uh, the deep fryer, I mean the uh, whatever this thing is called here, the air fryer. I'm not using it. It's not on. So I've got stuff on there. I've got leftover penne from yesterday. I'm going to put some of this in the soup and I'm going to keep some on the side for a salad and the pasta salad on the side is going to have uh, probably just use half of this tomato, some garlic stuffed onions and some black olives. I'm wondering what do you do with your leftovers? How do you manage food? And I'm also wondering how are you exploring vegan cuisine? Let me know in the comments. So I've got my cabbage and my potatoes chopped up. And for what it's worth, I basically cut one of those mini potatoes into 12 pieces because it's for soup, it's gonna be on the spoon, right? So the potatoes are really gonna help add the starchy flavorness to the soup. And I'm putting the potatoes and the cabbage in at the same time. And this cabbage, it'll break up as I uh, cook it away. I will add water in a moment. And I'm wondering, how's the weather where you are? It's really rainy where I am today. I love the rain, but not to be in it. <laughs> so I'm having a nice indoor day today, and it's a really good day for soup. So, okay, I got my some ingredients in the in the pot. I'm not gonna fill this whole pot up with water, uh, probably halfway. The thing about making soup is that the more adder, water you add, the take away the flavor. So if you want a flavorful soup, add more potatoes, add more cabbage. I'm also gonna be adding the corn later on because I don't want the corn to get soggy. The noodles, I'll probably just add that when I actually serve the soup. So I like having a big bowl <laughs> or two. And I want enough for leftovers as well. Ugh. So I got about, I don't know, half a pot here full of water. I'm gonna turn it on high, get it to a full boil. And I like to salt and pepper my soups just to get the flavor going. Um, but I always, make sure that I don't add too much because once the soup is ready, I like the taste of the raw salt and fresh pepper. So I'm just going to add pepper to it now. How much pepper? I don't know this much. <laughs> Whatever you're feeling, that's what I like about cooking. You don't have to follow a prescribed recipe. I, If you're like me, um, this is a new container, so, um, like hardly no salt was coming out at all but the more i use it the emptier it's getting so i just want to be careful with it and one reality is that when when you're cooking with any kind of uh, seasoning you want to be mindful that you're tasting it along the way to make sure that you're adjusting the flavor to your palate so I'm just waiting for the water to boil. Um, so I'm just sharing with you ingredients, not giving an actual recipe, if you will. Uh, often when I'm boiling things or frying them up, I like to uh, do just that. I like to fry it first and then add the um, water, but I don't want the soup to have a sauteed taste to it, if you know what I mean. I want the cabbage to be boiled. I want the potatoes to be boiled. And I want the water to have that flavor in there. So I'm also going to be adding a little bit of butter. And I'll show you the vegan butter that I'm using.
It's called Earth's Balance, and I'm not being endorsed by them, but so far this is the winner, if you will, out of the butters that I've tried. And there's not much left in here. I do have another one in the fridge. And uh, I add butter to pretty much everything. If I wanted to, I could add oil. But I'm a fan of butter. And uh, if you're like me and you like to spend time in the kitchen, you'll notice that when you're done making your soup and it sits overnight in the fridge, all of the fat rises to the top. And a lot of people take that fat layer off because it's fat, but really that's where all the taste and the flavor is. And so um, that's why I like to mix it in intentionally. <laughs> How about you? Let me know in the comments. So I was just having a little laugh to myself because I was thinking back to when I first was, you know, spending time in the kitchen and making soups, uh, I wouldn't put a lid on. And then through the boiling process, like half the soup would be <laughs> gone because it would, you know, uh, the steam would, would um, you know, it, I would lose the soup through the steam. And so um, I will be putting a lid on this in case you're wondering, but I want to get it boiling first and then I'm going to reduce the heat. <laughs> so I really enjoy spending time in the kitchen. It brings me a lot of joy and I really appreciate the food, the sights, the smells. I think about where the food came from. I'm thankful for the farmers who grow it. I'm thankful for all the truckers who bring the food to us, the local farmers. It's such a privilege for us. And uh, even just having running water. You know, I lived in a community where not everybody had running water. And that really surprised me. And so, you know, when I use the water, even just to rinse dishes, I think, wow, like, Imagine I had to pay um, for that or have like a limited amount of it. And I remember students in my class in this one community I worked in, we would always promote like, fill up your water bottle before you go home. And uh, I'm just really thankful for that. All of these little things, um, just the privilege of pouring water right out of my sink. So I like to connect with that and that's part of um, my sovereignty these days and really practicing presence. So I, um, I like corn, I buy peaches and cream when I can. And I also buy the uh, sweet peas if I can. I wonder about you. You know, some people they're like, oh, I don't like corn. And it's like, well, are you buying peaches and cream corn? <laughs> And a lot of people confuse that with cream corn. That's not what I'm talking about. Peaches and cream corn. It's not crossed with peaches by any means. It's just sweet on the sweeter side. And so uh, I put the rest of the bag back in the freezer and I got this handy here. While my cabbage and potatoes are boiling, uh, they haven't reached the boiling point yet, I'm going to chop up my tomato and I'm going to chop up the black olives. And I'm also going to add some uh, garlic stuffed olives. I love these. I love, love them just as is. I love drinking it with wine. Um, this is one of those things you can't just eat one, <laughs> right? I always have to have a handful at a time. And something that I love is just chopping these up with tomatoes. Uh, just those two ingredients make a fantastic little salsa. So it's a bonus that the black olives are going to be mixed in there. And as far as adding oil to it, you don't need to because these are oily and um, vinaigrette enough on their own. So I'm just going to do that now. So I cut up the black olives. I basically cut one olive into four pieces. So I'm going to do the same thing with the garlic stuffed olives. And I'm excited because I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just starting to get nice and hot, my water. And the rule of thumb is when you're cooking something like cabbage to make this soup, at least for me, is, uh, you know, when the potatoes are ready and they're nice and soft, that's a basically means that the soup is ready. And I don't know about you, but recently I switched from sea salt to kosher salt it, for no particular reason, just experimenting. And I really like the kosher salt. And so there you go. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with some folks who were talking about the ghosties and protection. And then 
I was like, well, never mind protection. What about cooking? I mean, what what salt are people cooking with? You know, maybe that's why the ghosties are scared of the salt because they don't want that salt to be associated with their recipes. <laughs> what do you think? I'd love to know your comments. And um, some of you, I know, you you don't spend a lot of time in the kitchens. And the teacher and me, I just can't help but share stuff with you. But uh, some of you, you have a lot of experience. And I know you're just watching this uh, because it brings you joy as well. Um, but this here is not a full boil, OK? A full boil is when it's really roaring. So it's almost there. Beautiful colors. Mm, it smells really good. And I think you can see the steam. I can see it. And this is a full boil. So now I'm going to reduce it. I'm still getting used to this oven. I'm, I turned it to um, seven, seven, eight is where I like to keep it because I want to make sure it's cooking. This isn't something that I'm going to be leaving on the stove for four hours. This is something I'm going to be eating as soon as it's ready. And I'm going to put a lid on it too. So I don't lose my soup to the to the steam in the air. <laughs> I just wanted to mention too, I don't know if you can relate, but when I'm making soup, doesn't matter how much soup I'm making, I always go for the big pot because I want there to be room um, in case it spills over or something like that. And I'm always close by in the kitchen. I usually wear an apron because uh, it's just a safety thing for me. And I decided this is going to be my apron, this outfit. <laughs> so in case you're wondering, and uh, whenever I cook, I don't go far from the kitchen at all. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm excited. I'm going to get back to chopping up my uh, garlic stuffed olives. And I'm going to sneak one too. <laughs> so I didn't just sneak one. I snuck a few of these. And um, I'm really enjoying myself. And I'm wondering if you're like me if, when you're cooking and spending time in the kitchen, if you like to sneak a little bite of something. For me, it's a way of knowing, like foraging the the scents and the smells. So I wonder if you can relate. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I've added my chopped stuffed garlic olives to this. And I'm going to only cut up half this tomato and slice and dice it. Why half? Well, why not? Uh, that's what cooking's all about. And also, I love toasted tomato sandwiches. and. That's actually why I bought these tomatoes. So <laughs> tomorrow I'm having a toasted tomato sandwich. If you were tuning in yesterday, I made granola bars. And um, I'll just show you quickly. Um, I got that in the fridge. Oh, this is the wrong container. <laughs> OK, here we go. Yeah, this is the right container. Uh, so I got I got into this today. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, instead of just chopping it up and eating it in a square or rectangle shape, I actually really enjoyed it on toast. So I made one, I toasted one slice of toast, and then I just put this on um, and crumbled it up. It was really fresh and really tasty. And I was going to take a video, but I was like, eh, I'm still in my pajamas. So I'm wondering, again, how do you manage your food? How do you change it up a little bit? Love to know. So I'm just checking on my soup here. I'm still getting used to this oven. I feel like um, being on seven is still a bit high. So I'm going to reduce it to uh, Five and a half, see how that feels. I don't want it to be at a roaring boil anymore. I just want it to be at a at a lower bo boil, like a medium high, I, I think is the language used. <laughs> and I'm gonna chop up that half tomato now. Okay, so I brought the camera closer to me. So I've got my tomatoes, the black olives, and the garlic stuffed olives if you want to chop this up smaller you can it really is just to your preference and something i'm going to do now is add some of the macaroni to it 
So if I wanted to, I could even take this and chop this in half, which I'm going to do. Um, so I'm just going to put it here on the cutting board. And I mean, the sky's, I, well, actually, I would tell you the sky's the limit, but I know through hypnotherapy and my experience as an RTT, um, rapid transformational therapist, hypnotherapist practitioner, that there are no limits. You know, you, we just smash through one sky after another glass sky. So yeah, something I tend to do when I cook is I get carried away. So I'm, I want to make sure I keep this for my soup. <laughs> And like I said, when I serve the soup, I'm going to add those noodles at the last minute. Why? Because they're already cooked. So what I like to do is when I serve it, you'll see I could just, you know, put it in the soup or I could put it in the bowl and then add the soup to it. And because the soup is going to be so boiling hot, it's going to warm up those noodles, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm really not going to overthink it. I'm just going to cut these in half. And this isn't my kitchen, so I'm just working with whatever utensils are here. I feel like this knife so far is the winner, <laughs> just to uh, slice and dice things. If I had macaroni noodles, that would be ideal because they would be smaller noodles. And what I was talking about earlier was that, you know, you can just leave this as is because the combination of the liquid from the tomatoes and then combined with the garlic stuffed olives that in itself is a nice little marinade but if you want you can add balsamic vinegar to this you can add uh, some kind of vegan miracle whip to it you can do all kinds of things i'm just going to add uh, salt and pepper to it and one of the things that i love about cooking is you don't have to worry about ratios so i feel like this is good enough and if I wanted to add, you know, if I had like leftover cooked corn, I also love to toss that into a salad. <laughs> so I'm wondering if you can relate. It, this smells really good and fresh. It's going to give the soup a bit of a stir here. There you go. <laughs> So it smells really good. And I'm just gonna find a potato and press it to the side, see how it's doing. Oh yeah, it's still really super hard. And I'm gonna reduce this even more. <laughs> I'm making a connection that the stove at my last place um, really needed to be on high heat because um, I'm noticing with this stove, uh, it doesn't have to be on high heat. And um, I'm more of a cook than a baker. But for what it's worth, I remember when I was a kid, I would make peanut butter cookies, oatmeal cookies, and I would really follow the recipe. Okay, I really would try. And something that really got me was the peanut butter cookies would say 12 minutes. And it's like, well, it's been 12 minutes, and they're totally not cooked yet. You know, they're not baked or maybe um they're starting to burn and it's only at the nine minute mark and one day i was watching tv remember in the yan can cook days <laughs> right i love yan can cook um and i think it was yan who was talking about that how it really depends on the appliances that you're using so don't be hard on yourself and it's another reason why it's a good idea to stay in the kitchen when you're cooking so i'm going to add some kosher salt and some pepper to my little uh, pasta salad here. I love cracked pepper. If I can get, uh, you know, regular ground pepper, whatever. If I wanted to add something like cumin to this or curry or even taco seasoning, garlic powder, gar um, garlic powder, onion powder, I can do that and it'll transform the flavor. So if you have leftovers and you're trying to change it up, those are tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. So I'm going to get my uh, kosher, kosher salt. And for what it's worth, the garlic stuffed olives are already 
defaulted to being on the salty side. So I don't want to add too much. There it is. <laughs> so this is just going to be like a little side dish that goes with the soup. If you wanted to uh, dump it in the soup, you could. Uh, when I, I like my soups thin. Otherwise, I consider it a stew. <laughs> and mm, this smells really fresh. And uh, something I like to do is, is I like to put my rice on the side. And then what I do is I'll take the rice and then I'll um, enjoy it with some of the soup broth. Instead of dumping the rice in the soup, I find it's more enjoyable of an experience and the rice doesn't get soggy. Um, if you wanted to do that with this, you could. Um, you could put this in a wrap. Something I really like to do, minus the noodles, is um, use it for tacos or uh, tostito chips. And it's a really nice um, delight. And seasonally, I've added mangoes in here. I've added apples. Um, you can really transform it, just apples and raisins with some uh, baked almonds, cashews. I'm wondering where does your mind take you? Uh, there are no limits to the journey of the mind. And I just can't say it enough. This smells phenomenal. <laughs> so I'm going to sneak a bite of it. And uh, I'm tempted to add some of the balsamic vinegar salad dressing that I have in the fridge, but I don't think I'm going to. I want a little bit of everything to be in my bite. I need some garlic and some olives. Mmm, good, really good stuff. And I'm just gonna put this in the fridge so I don't eat it all. <laughs> and I'll be right back when the potatoes are ready. So I'm new to vegan <clears throat> cuisine and something I totally neglected was protein and where do you like get that and uh, I find green split peas yellow split peas and the red lentils have lots of protein in it and it's quite affordable for these bags and I also have barley but I don't want to add a lot of ingredients to my soup so I'm just going to add a small handful of each so I'm going to pour it in a strainer rinse it and add it so how much did I add this much <laughs> So in some worst case scenario, if my soup's getting too thick for me, I could add more water. I do have some vegetable broth in the fridge, but I don't want to use it. So um, anyways, I'm going to add this. And uh, lesson learned for me, this kind of stuff takes a little while to cook. So um, that's a reality. Oh, well. And my corn, I might have to put it back in the freezer <laughs> by the time this is ready. So. It looks like it's still um, on the thin side. So that's good. And I'm just thinking, you know, um, last week I made these mock Big Macs. <laughs> It didn't taste like meat, but I used the orange lentils, red lentils, uh, and I mixed it with Aunt Jemima pancake flour mix and turned out really good. It had like a cookie texture to it, cookie dough, and I was able to press it into panties and pan fry it. And if I could do this meal over again, I would probably um, make extra of those and then serve that as a side dish or maybe even just crumble it up in here. I could have also reached for a can of beans, but we just had tacos the other day. We finished off the last of the beans yesterday, so I want a little break from beans. So I added more water to this, so I'm just bringing it back up to a boil. In the past, I've boiled water in the kettle and just um, poured that in, but whatever. That's part of the joys and ways of knowing when it comes to cooking, and the reason I added more um, water is because of the barley lentil factor and so whatever and if I feel like it's lacking in flavor I could always add more salt more pepper and again uh, that's just part of the ways of knowing and I'm wondering what are your ways of knowing what do you do when you have a hiccup in the kitchen 
what do you do um, when you add too much salt? One strategy is to add a big potato and then you just take the potato out. But um, I don't like to fall down that rabbit hole. So I'm just always adding a little bit of salt and pepper and tasting as I go. And I'm telling you, it's pretty tasty so far. So I've reduced the soup back to five. And I'm just, you know, checking in on my corn here. It's still pretty frozen. So it's not a big deal that it's sitting out here on the counter. And I just wanted to share that with you because sometimes we get caught up in the kitchen. Uh, usually I just take the ingredients right out of the freezer and it goes right into the boiling water. But I wanted to show you the portion sizes and I'm new at this. So this is a exciting uh, new way of knowing for me. Uh, finding space in this kitchen that I'm not familiar with, using things that are available to me. And I'm wondering if you can relate. Love to hear about it in the comments. So I forgot to mention, I also added a little bit more butter just to um, help balance everything initially, all the ingredients that I kicked it off with. And it's coming along. It smells fantastic. It tastes fantastic. I feel like it could totally use more salt, but again, I don't want to add too much salt. So I'm just going to uh, let this boil here. I checked on the potato. It's still pretty hard. So that makes me feel good about the barley and the lentils that I added in there. Or what did I add in here? The green split peas? Yeah, green split peas. And you can see here, really nice. And the yellow corn is going to complement it. There's a potato there. And things are happening, you know? Things are getting a little bit more real and real. And um, if you're new to cooking, don't be scared. Just make things in small portions. It's like camping. You'll find your way of knowing. And uh, just make sure you're stirring your pot if uh, so nothing is like sticking on the bottom. And if for some reason it starts over boiling, just immediately remove it from the heat <laughs> um, and then reduce it. Um, sometimes that happens. And I've cooked with uh, lentils and snap peas in the past. And even if I rinse them, notoriously, that it tends to overboil. So it's good to always have a big pot when you're cooking. And I'm just going to make sure I put my lid back on. And uh, you can even see um, the butter on top, like the oil. It's vegan butter, uh, but you can see it here. So anyways, the ingredients are marrying very nicely. So I was snooping around in the fridge and I found this apple. There's other apples too, but I always want to be mindful to use whatever is ripening fast. And this one, it's in great shape but it is just starting to have some bruises on it. And so I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just uh, slice up this apple, put some cinnamon on it, and I'm not gonna add it to my pasta sauce. I'm just gonna munch on it now. Maybe there'll be some leftovers for dinner, but I'm gonna take the apple core and put it in my jug of water and overnight it will infuse and it'll just add a nice uh, sweet flavor to the water. So I'm just slicing up this apple really thin. Um, it's nice to have thinly sliced apples. And a lot of people, they peel the, the, the peel off. Uh, but you know what? That's really good fiber for you and nutrients. Sometimes I find it tastes like pesticide. It's happening more and more these days. Apples, carrots potatoes those things it's not all the time but sometimes i buy them and i'm like Ugh, i can really taste the pesticide uh, so if you're if you know that's what's going on i would just throw out the whole entire fruit or vegetable i wouldn't just peel off the peel this apple seems to be fine and uh i'm gonna sprinkle some uh, cinnamon on it uh, in just a moment so this part here, um, I can eat it, <laughs> but it's just a bit hard. If I want to eat the whole entire apple core, I can, uh, but we tend not to. So because I'm serving this, I'm going to 
make it look pretty, make it look appealing, I guess, is what I'm trying to express. And then this here, I'm literally just going to toss it in the jug. <laughs> and then I'm going to fill it with water, cold water. And I'm going to put it in the fridge and it's just going to sit there. Because it's just one apple core, I'm not going to fill the whole jug up. Maybe just half the jug. So, just like that. <laughs> And if I had oranges or pears, I could do the same. Orange peels, I find it's a bit too intense. Uh, same with grapefruit peels. Uh, but just to put the apple core, pear core in here, it's really great. Or um, just to squeeze, um, if you chop up a uh, grapefruit or an orange, just squeeze that in there. It's nice. And uh, in the past, I've taken things like orange peels apple peels and whatnot, put it on the stove with water, added cinnamon, and it's just a nice way to add some scent into the air. And sometimes I'll even add vinegar to it because it just has like a cleanliness to it. Vinegar is really good for cleaning and also a natural deodorizer. Oh, and I wanted to mention that um, the best case scenario is that this sits overnight. And something else I really like to do is if I have cucumber, you know how you just have like a little bit of cucumber left? You just slice that up and put it in water, let it infuse overnight, and it's a really refreshing treat. Um, so a lot of people, they limit it to lemons. And I was also going to share with you, um, I always go to bed with a mason jar. So um, I've got two here to drink because I needed the jug. Um, so when I drink water, I don't really sip it. I drink a lot of it at once. And I'm wondering if you can relate. I'm one of those people, I wake up in the middle of the night and I feel like I need to drink water and that's fine. But it took me a while to realize that. So if you're having trouble sleeping, it might just be because you're dehydrated and you need water. Also as a strategy to train the subconscious mind and get in tune with um, my intuitive side, I tell myself I drink a little bit of water and it's like I'm gonna remember my dreams as I drink this water I'm remembering my dreams and then in the dream world it's like what there I am drinking water and so there's like these alter um, realities going on where we're drinking water and it helps me with lucid dreaming and getting into that play getting into the mindset of bridging the dream world with the waking world so if you're wondering what this is, this is actually, um, it's just plain old water. And yesterday I put three tea bags of St. John's wort in there. So it added a bit of color and I'll add two or three tea bags depending on how strong the flavor is. So there you go, wondering about you. So the nice thing about cooking is just the foraging that comes with it. I've got some dates here. They're naturally sweet. And I was thinking, you know, ever since I mentioned different <clears throat> kinds of salads and salsa, apples and raisins, I thought, oh, man, I, that's what I want to do now. So I'm actually going to cook just a small handful of almonds. I'm going to eat a date. Nice and sweet. I'm going to chop up these um, two dates. I'm going to leave my uh, apples here in this size. I'm just going to break them apart. If I wanted to chop it up smaller, I could, whatever. And I'm going to add a bit of lemon just because I can. You know, nothing beats lemon. I love lemon. And uh, I wanted to get real lemons, but... Um, they didn't look like they were, um, they were like too green at the grocery store. So I opted out. And you know, this is good food for you and it's quality food. I'm hesitant. I've got a green apple in the fridge as well. But like I said, I, I don't want to go too overboard here. <laughs> and, um, I'm cooking for two tonight and I always think kind of like three or four because um, I have a big appetite and I want to make sure there's leftovers for tomorrow. Um, 
for lunch. I'm going to add cinnamon to this as well. I tend to have a, a heavy hand for cinnamon, so I've got to be careful. And I'm going to turn my oven to um, 400. And I always turn the light on just to remind me that the oven is on. And I'm going to use um, almonds, like I was saying. So I'm going to do that right now. So I got this pan here. And I've got walnuts and other nuts like that too, but you know what? Sometimes it's nice just to limit things and um that's all i'm gonna use because you know what a little bit a little bit it really adds up it's like when you're at a buffet i don't know if you can relate but i'm a sucker for buffets i love buffets and i seriously i just take like a little bit of this a little bit of that and my plate is full <laughs> um and that's like cooking in the kitchen and being creative and i'm wondering if you can relate how you manage your food so i'm gonna add just a little bit of cinnamon And the best case scenario is to let it sit overnight, but whatever, we're going to have it now or in a couple of hours. And as a kindergarten teacher, I taught kindergarten for 16 years, uh, primary grades one to three, mostly kindergarten. And I would talk to the parents. I don't have children of my own, but I would talk to the parents about, um, apples going brown because the kids <clears throat> they eat the apple so darn slow <laughs> it takes a long time to eat a big apple and it's actually better just to give the child half of an apple so you know if you've got two kids give them half an apple each or you the parent eat half of the apple and if you can do it the night before and put cinnamon on it it helps with that brown on it because by the time you know, the, the kids aren't even done eating half the apple and it's going brown on them. And I'm one of those teachers that I insisted on snack time and I would eat snack with the kids. And it was a good learning curve for myself because I was role modeling, like, what, what can I eat? And food always has brought people together. And it's nice when you have um, cheese and crackers. Uh, these days I'm on the lookout for vegan cheese. And it's just really nice. It's really nice. So I'm going to um, chop up these dates, just slice it lengthwise. And uh, you know what? I, I like to use the scissors. <laughs> so I'm going to slice it uh, lengthwise here and just go like this. And you know what? If you have figs or raisins, you can use those. You can use all of the above. And this kind of stuff is always well received. If you're going to a party, you know, everybody's like gluten free, this free, that free. <laughs> so it's nice when you bring something like this, it's always well received, especially uh, toasted nuts. Uh, one time I brought a mason jar full of roasted nuts and then I um, added some chocolate chips in there and I was stressed out about it because the nuts were too hot and I couldn't add the chocolate chips and so I had to put it in um, the freezer to try and speed up the process and then finally I could add the chocolate chips and I brought it and I, um, I also added some dried fruit in there and the person that I gave it to it was like super well received and um, she didn't want to share it with anybody else and so some people saw um, that I gave it to her and just out of like being polite, she put a little bit in a bowl, like just a little bit. And then she's like, I'm keeping the rest of this for me. Okay. Is it okay if I don't share? And I was like, do what you want with it. <laughs> so as I'm making this apple prune almond salad, it's transforming and transcending, if you will. So, um, initially I really liked these apple slices, but I think I'm just going to actually cut it with the scissors. Um, that way, when I eat it, I can just eat it by the spoonful. And the almonds, I 
I may or may not crush them. We'll see how I'm feeling when they come out of the oven. I just put them in there. And I don't know about you, but I intentionally like it when my, um, whether it's nuts or seeds, I like it when some are a little bit burnt. So um, intentionally I'm doing that. And uh, in just a minute, I'm gonna give it a shake. So uh, just to make sure that they're toasting on both sides. So my cat Rosie's here and she's meowing up a storm. And uh, I don't know, maybe Rosie's channeling these cooking ideas to me. Hey, Rosie. <laughs> I wonder when you're cooking if your pets are involved. And um, you know what, for what it's worth, I don't feed Rosie food when I'm cooking. I think she's just jealous, like, who am I talking to and giving you attention instead of her. Um, but you know, cats can be assholes, right? And so it's like, if I actually turned off this camera and gave her attention, let's not get ourselves, she would just walk away, right? <laughs> can you relate? And um, for what it's worth, especially people who have dogs, please don't feed your dogs when you're eating or your cats. Because then what ends up happening is they drool and they always come and when a company is coming over and it's not well received. So unless you're always going to be feeding your pet when you're cooking, don't do that, right? And um, on Facebook, I belong to multiple communities where people have pets and they're always like, why does my pet do this? I don't feed them. And it's because probably because the foster parent or whoever had them initially was doing that. And so, you know, um, like that expression goes, um, if you feed a cat once, the cat always comes back and it's like they remember so they know um anyways my corn here it's like solid ice right so i guess my freezer is uh really good at keeping things frozen i was gonna put it in the fridge but it's fine right now in case you were wondering so i'm just gonna check on my almonds i don't know how long they've been in there for maybe just a couple of minutes really but i am starting to smell them so that's a good sign that they're toasting and roasting away and uh, what I do is I just give it a shake and uh, some of them look like they're on the, the black side and that's good because like I said I intentionally want some of them to be a little bit burnt so um, I'm just going to make sure I don't lose track of time and see you in, a, in maybe another minute or two. 